so a couple of weeks ago here in Holy Family, we had a commitment ceremony where our young people somewhat uh, entered more formally into the community. So they spend six weeks here learning how life works and learning all sorts of really important life lessons like punctuality and responsibility and all of these wonderful things uh, for community life around here. And what was interesting was, um, normally it, it's, it's, it's a semi-formal kind of occasion. Well, it's, formal, it's a formal enough kind of occasion, really. And uh, uh, what's interesting is when, when, when the girls get ready, right, when the girls prepare, it's a big thing for girls. There's talk about it for days beforehand and probably days afterwards as well, whereas the lads, um, they, they shower and... That's kind of it. But the girls, what's interesting though, what I found really interesting is just, you know, I'm always kind of a, an observer here. I'm always ob observing everything that goes on around Holy Family. And uh, what's interesting, interesting was uh, to see the girls with curly hair, for that occasion they have to straighten the hair. The girls with straight hair, for that occasion they have to <laughs> curl the hair, right? And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just interesting, like th those then who have a kind of a maybe a more like tanned complexion, they're trying to look paler. The girls who look kind of more pale are look, trying to look more tanned. And it's just, it's just really interesting. And then actually, if you think a little more globally as well, how this works uh, as regards beautifying oneself globally in, in countries where people would have a naturally darker skin, uh, like in Africa or Asia, the darker you are, that was considered to be lower class. Why? Because you were a worker. You were outside digging the ground. So paler was prettier. That's why, you know, I think of the Japanese, the, the typical Japanese lady or whatever it would be, is actually quite pale, you know, because it was a sign of being more upper class. Uh, it's just very interesting, very interesting. Anyway, let's, uh, let's not get uh, all uh, sidelined by Yves Saint Laurent and... Uh, all of your makeup things. The interesting thing about it, though, for, from, like from our, our faith perspective, is just to see how the, the general message out there is that whatever way you are, you should be somewhere else. It should be some other way. All right? whatever, so if you're tall, you should be a bit too tall, really, aren't you? If you're small, a little bit too small, aren't you? If you're pale, a little too pale, aren't you? you know, no matter what way you are, you should be something else. Right? So you basically, you're never really really good enough the way you are all right, when it comes to those kind of things, when it comes to externals and how you look and, and that. We should, you know, really, you should be somewhere else. You can never really actually settle and just say, happy enough. Happy enough with the way I look? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not allowed. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't do that. If you have curly hair, what are you doing with curly hair? It should be straight. If you're straighter, what are you doing with straight hair? You know, there's no kind of one rule for everyone. Whatever way you are, you should be somewhere else. And it's... It's this kind of constant disquiet, right, which obviously then the, the makeup industry feeds into, right, or maybe even fuels. Uh, we have the solution to your problem, right? We have things that will cover up your blemishes, and you need it. You need what we have because you are blemished, right? It's just, it's, I, find it, I find it just so interesting like that, in, and, and it's kind of accepted that... It's just, yeah, it's just the way I am if I'm, you know, and for lads, it's, it's not as bad, but it's still there somehow. You know, if you're tall, eh, it's better to be a bit more butch. If you're a little, if you're a little more, you know, stocky built, oh, sure, maybe I could, I could use it, lose a few pounds so the muscles are more defined. Or does, No matter what way you are, you have to be different, better, faster, stronger, whatever it is. Interestingly, though, in the world, when it comes to the way we live our lives, our moral choices, that's not applied at all. Whatever you choose is fine. It's just interesting that there's such a... When it comes to the externals, you're never really okay. You should always try harder. But uh, when it comes to the interior life, the more important things, it's fine. It's all grand. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No consequences. Where in the Lord's eyes, it's, it's the complete opposite. So how do, we, how, do we balance, how do we balance these two? Because... In the external, unimportant things, you know, it is important to some degree that we make some sort of an effort to be presentable, okay? Right, I may or may not, like, comb the side parting in every day. There you go, presentable. Um, so it's, it's good to make some sort of an effort, and yet, at the same time, see, the, the spiritual life is all about balance, okay? It's not that you're hideously ugly and nothing can help you, and it's not that, you know, just believe that you're drop-dead gorgeous and it's all fine. 
you know, like, yeah, there, there are things maybe I could do to improve, but we're grand, like, you know, I'm happy in myself. And in the spiritual life, it's very similar. It's not that we're being beaten down all the time, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, but yet at the same time, we should realize and recognize that there is more I can do. So it, it, it's a balance. It's not all one, it's not big dirty sinner going to hell, or it's not we're all going to heaven anyway. Bo both, both are wrong. Both are wrong. The, the truth is, is in the middle or somewhere. We, we are imperfect. We do make mistakes. But the Lord provides all the grace we need. Wherever sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. So we, we do need God's help. And he's more than ready, willing, and able to give it. So then there's always hope. So then we, we, we live in a reality. I don't try and convince myself that I'm perfect, that I'm, that I'm a saint already. I'm not. But I do know that I'm, I'm, I'm trying, and God's grace is, is sufficient. God's grace is enough. Okay? So like when we read in our first reading today, the Lord is not being slow to carry out his promises, but he is being patient with you, wanting nobody to be lost, and everybody to be brought to change his ways. He wants everybody to come and change their ways. This season of Advent, it's a season of preparation. So it's a season where... Again, if everything was already done, then Advent would be useless. We're trying to prepare our hearts, not just, again, as we mentioned before in previous weeks, for the entrance of the Lord into the crib, or for the entrance of the Lord into the world historically, that's all wonderful. But for the entrance of the Lord into my life. See, if this was already done, we wouldn't need Advent, we wouldn't need Christmas. But to prepare my interior life, my heart, to become a worthy dwelling place for the Lord. To become a place where God can come and live. Where God can come and transform me from within. This, this does need preparation. So I recognize this, this, this balance. Um, you'll forgive, uh, forgive me if I use this word. It's a word that St. Faustina uses a lot. Uh, but to recognize our misery and to recognize God's mercy. And keep them both there. I need God. But he, he is there, he does forgive me, and his grace is sufficient. But I need him. But he's there. So it's both. It's not, we're all going to hell, or it's not, we're all going to heaven. That's just madness. Right? It's just, I need help, and God offers it. I'm not perfect. God makes up for what I lack. And that way, I can actually be happy being me. I'm, I know that it's not that I'm kind of I'm, I'm not perfect, but I'm good enough. I'm lovable as I am. I'm lovable and I'm loved. So every time we, we see a crib, every time we see a cross, every time we see a crucifix, we are reminded of how much we are loved. You are lovable. We are lovable. And this, this might seem maybe obvious to, to a lot of you, and hopefully it is. Hopefully it's obvious. Hopefully I'm preaching to the converted here. But uh, this isn't really the case with an awful lot of young people where they do not believe they're loved as they are. They do not believe they're good enough as they are. They do not believe that they will ever be loved or lovable, ever, by anyone. This is epidemic out there. This, this sense of lovelessness. I can't actually be loved as I am, or I have to be another way in order to be loved. So this is something that we can definitely keep in our prayers. This, this need to... to bring into the world again the light of Jesus Christ. This, this, the, the truth of the fact that we're loved and lovable as we are. That yes, we can improve and the Lord gives us time to improve and we should try and deepen our prayer lives and deepen our, our conversion, deepen our relationship with him. Absolutely. We have to. We really must work on those things. But we are loved and lovable as we are. And so we ask the good Lord today to guide every day of this Advent, not just in preparation for the Christmas celebration, but in preparation for something so much deeper, preparation for a deeper encounter with him, a deeper faith in our Lord and our Savior, a deeper reliance on our Heavenly Father, a deeper humility as regards the guidance of our Blessed Mother. 